Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all back to, uh, to, uh, this game, Gothic. And I was told that, uh, this bow apparently looks very weird on a mage, so I will remove it to, uh, satisfy the masses. Alright, so, uh, before we proceed, we were told by, um, Korangar that Eberian placed the what remained of his uh, faith in his dying moments in the uh, plans of the water mages to bring everyone to freedom and that's where we are supposed to go next but first I wanted to take advantage of this opportunity to invest in some kind of uh, magic and I'm gonna take a quick look at what spells this guy has available he has fireball which is circle three Fire bolt. That's all we really have available. Fireball can be extremely useful. There are some spells that are substantially more useful, however. We will buy this one, and I think we will actually uh, learn up to circle... Uh, learn up to magic circle 3, just so we can use it, as well as invest in some... in uh, some more mana. Mag going up to Magic Circle 3 should take us 30 learning points, if I recall correctly. Master, I'd like to wear the High Robe of Fire. The time has come. You are worthy of wearing the High Robe of Fire. Certainly more worthy than that guy behind you. Now, it's interesting that he does that. When you get to wear the High Robe, all depends on how far you've progressed in the main quest. It has nothing whatsoever to do with how talented you are in magic so we've gotten worthy simply because we've reached this far in the main quest i need more magic i can help you do it so he can also teach us mana so can torres outside Please if i recall correctly of course the circles symbolize your share of the magic they stand for knowledge skill and the learning of new magic spells you must pass through each circle before you can join the next many hours of learning are required and you'll need much experience to reach the higher circles. But your efforts to reach them will be rewarded with new and powerful spells each time. However, the circles of magic are more than that. They are part of your life. They will always be with you. Make them part of you. To understand their might, you need to recognize your own. All right, so, oh, I seem to be grossly mistaken. I am ready to enter the first circle. To enter the first of the magic circles means learning to use magic runes. Each rune contains the structure of a special magic spell. By using your own magic powers, you'll be able to cast the magic of the rune. But in contrast to the magic scrolls, which are magic formulas as well, the magic power of the rune ensures that the structure of the spell endures. Every rune is a source of magic power, which you can fall back on any time. Your own magic power is used up when you use a rune, just as with a spell scroll. With every circle you enter, you learn to use further runes as well. Use the power of the runes to recognize yourself. So they go very in-depth in uh, how they interpret the rune magic and the structure of magic overall. It's very interesting how each faction sort of interprets the uh, connection between magic and, I suppose, humanity itself. Um, of course, these uh, sleepers camp interprets it very differently. But um, unfortunately, since we cannot join all three camps in one playthrough, I can't really show you uh, how each of them... Uh, what kind of dialogue you get from each of them as you learn more about magic, but... It's very intriguing overall, and I think probably the uh, water mages have the most, uh, I would say, realistic interpretation of uh, magic overall. But we're going to continue learning these circles. I am ready to enter the second circle. You have learned to understand the runes. Now is the time to deepen this understanding. When you join the second circle, you will learn the foundation of stronger battle spells and above all, the secret of healing. But you need to learn much if you want to recognize the true secrets of magic. You know that you can use every rune as often as you like, 
until you've used up all of your own powers. But before you act, think about the point of your actions. You have obtained powers with which you may easily conjure up death and destruction. But a true magician only uses magic when it is necessary. Understand the situation, then you'll recognize the power of the runes. So the way he kind of explains it there is that magic is, of course, a very uh, potent uh, force in this world. And that your ability to command it comes with a huge responsibility that you used it uh, in a very just manner. Could you teach me the third circle? The third circle of magic is one of the most important steps in the life of a magician. Once you've reached it, you'll cease to be a seeker. You have already come far on the path of magic. You have learned to use the runes. This knowledge is the foundation for your further path. Use the runes with deliberation. You may use a rune or not, but you must decide on one of these possibilities. Do not hesitate to use your powers as soon as you've made your choice. Understand your path, then you'll recognize the power of the decision. So there's a whole lot of depth to that, and we've got six learning points left, which is not really a whole lot For the to obtain some mana, but I can help. three more points of mana will get us to 20, which equates to... equates to four casts of the fireball spell. So that can be pretty substantial, but we're obviously going to be uh, sticking to melee pretty substantially from this point on. Now, there is one one spell that I truly want, simply because it's something I've never really used a whole lot of, but I imagine it's going to be extremely powerful, and for some reason, even though it's a fire-based spell, I don't think it's actually considered a spell of the fire mages so we are going to head back to the swamp camp real quick and see if i can obtain it there i don't know why i'm doing that because i can just use this Uh, so he has uh, spell scrolls for this, so it seems pretty clear to me that Pyrokinesis is in fact a spell of Swamp Camp, which means we can obtain it pretty much at any point, since the, uh, as far as I know, he remains a vendor throughout the rest of the game and will always update his inventory accordingly. But uh, I kind of wanted to talk about the charm spell here. It seems to be one of the more uh, useless, although, like... It sounds useful, but it turns out to be one of the more useless spells in this game. Um, basically, the idea of it is it's supposed to allow you to uh, possess pretty much any NPC, but the more powerful the NPC, the more mana it takes to possess them. And the end result is that you control their body, essentially the way uh, the more scripted voodoo spells worked in Risen 2 and 3. And, yeah, that's, that's the gist of it. But the problem is, the, like I said, the more powerful the NPC, the more mana it takes. So anyone who's remotely useful as a, uh, a minion, I suppose, is simply too powerful for you to have a realistic amount of mana in order to control them. And, of course, the drawback of that is that you are no longer in control of your own character, so... Anything you do to put your host body in danger is uh, something you can't really deal with. So you, you would have to leave your body behind. It's not really all that important, but essentially the, the spell was made to be extremely powerful, but was given too many limitations that it ultimately ended up being pretty much worthless. All right, so we have to go to the new camp, and that's going to be quite a trek since we don't have any quick means to get there, but I will take advantage of this time to talk about a few things since uh, I've gotten a few comments in the meantime. 
my good friend Oleg Freeman has confirmed what I suspected, which is that the Iron Keep community patch is what caused the problem of NPCs getting up immediately after knocking them down. And uh, so the bottom line is I'm going to have to uninstall that. I kind of forgot to before I started this. It's not a big deal because we're not going to have to fight any NPCs for a while, but we're going to get to a point in the game where we're going to have to fight a lot of NPCs, and the end result of that is that uh, we're going to have way too much trouble actually keeping them down while taking on all the rest of them. So it's probably in my best interest to uh, uninstall it. Um, it does a lot of useful things, but there's nothing that it fixes that I have not already learned how to work around. So I'm not all that concerned in uh, in keeping it installed. So there I figured I'd demonstrate the uh, fireball spell. It costs quite a bit of mana and it, I mean it costs 5 mana which is not really quite a bit in the end. But it takes a fair amount of time to cast it. The advantage is that in this game the AI of creatures doesn't tend to really react if you kill part of their pack immediately. So you saw that one scavenger, when I killed the first one, the rest of them didn't really react to it. What was that? I heard someone shouting. Uh, so yeah, if you kill one of the, uh, one of the monsters in a pack outright, the other ones may not even really react to it. They may not, may not even notice. Now, this is something I forgot about before, but these fellows here are just like Pacho on the other side. They're trying to keep you out of the orc land. These guys are altogether a bit uh, different when you try to uh, approach anyway. But apparently they don't give a shit now, probably because I'm a mage, so I kind of missed my opportunity. Basically... They would tell you to turn around, and if you refuse to turn around, uh, the guard in the bigger armor there would say, well, if you're going to march off to your death, you might as well give me everything you have on you. Because otherwise it's all going to waste. So, uh, basically, he, he would demand that you hand over all your ore. And if you didn't, then he just wouldn't let you through. So it's no big deal. Um, alright, so what else? Uh, Oldie Freeman also asked my thoughts on the, uh, presence of human skeletons in the, uh, Orc Cemetery. I figure there's probably not any real deeper meaning to it. It's probably something Piranobites put there for the sake of atmosphere, essentially. But if it did have a deeper meaning, it's probably just that the Orcs sacrificed humans in the cemetery either to the ancestors or more likely to the sleeper itself. And he also suggested that the uh, these tiny skulls on pikes at the entrance of the cave were probably goblin skeletons or goblin skulls suggesting some connection between orcs and goblins and in most fantasy settings yes there is a uh, there is a connection between orcs and goblins. Usually... Oh, wow, you scared me. Usually there's, a, like, a literal alliance between the two, if not even a uh, distinct, like, biological relationship between the two. In this game, I don't think that's really the case. You don't usually see orcs and goblins together in, this, uh, in the gothic games. So I don't think there's a distinct uh, relationship between the two. But either way, they could be human skeletons or they could be goblin skeletons. Who really knows? I'm not convinced that Piranha Bites ever really meant you to read that deeply into it. But uh, I was also kind of curious at the idea. It did lead me to think more about uh, Baal Lukor and how he... Uh, immediately attacked the hero while they were in there. And that leads me to think that maybe 
the uh, the cave being sort of a ritual site for the orcs was also a place of profound, like a place where the uh, sleeper had a huge amount of influence. And perhaps that is why he was so distinctly able to influence Baalukor into attacking the hero. Maybe he interpreted the hero as a distinct threat. And uh, that was how he tried to kill him, by convincing all the Templars to go to the Orc Cemetery and uh, conv figuring the hero would probably go with them and die in the process. Obviously that didn't work out that way, but he did get a lot of Templars killed in the process. It seems to be uh, pretty solid evidence that the Templars should not be following him anymore. And it also led me to wonder, uh, something I had actually thought about while, like in the editing of the last episode, which I kind of regret not addressing there, which is just how in the hell did the hero even even witness the same vision as the rest of the swamp camp? He is not a novice. He is not a guru. He's not a Templar. He's not any in any way related to the swamp camp. So how did he see the vision? The whole point of the vision was that it was the faith of the uh, novices and bowels and everything in conjunction with the potion brewed by Kor Kalam. So, I don't know how the hero was supposed to have witnessed it as well, but I suppose it's possible that Kor Kalam's potion, which he brewed from the mind crawler secretion, was weaved into a spell as opposed to an actual elixir that was consumed by the individual novices and Templars and everything. So it's possible that it was just a spell that affected every mind in the area. And that's how the uh, hero was able to witness it, simply by his presence in the uh, course of the ritual. Anyway, we are passing through here again. And I think we are in enough shape that we can actually uh, take on Lefty and the Rice Lord here. So let's give it a shot and see what comes of it. Because he's going to confront us as soon as we pass by him. Since we were supposed supposed to deliver water to the peasants, like, ages ago. So let's see what he says. From now on, you can carry the water yourself. Oh, have you got better plans? I think I'll have to remind you who's the boss. Okay, okay. He's now, I don't know up. why... I don't know. Oh, the Rice Lord hasn't even reacted to it. You won't have much time to be sorry for. Now, that. normally he will actually like interrupt you when you're trying to run past him. I don't know why he didn't do it here. It might again be part of the uh, Iron Key patch, just a glitch. You looking for trouble with me again? How are you, my friend? Oh man, what do you want? The peasants look thirsty. I'll see to it. Don't worry. Damn right you will. Alright, so... Seems we have actually... Let's see, let's see. Water character... Yeah, so we taught Lefty a lesson, but we still need to teach the Rice Lord a lesson, I think. He's had enough. Damn right he has, you son of a bitch. You'll be I ain't done looting ya. There we go. That's what I like to see. You'll be sorry for that. Will I? You looking for trouble with me again? Left. Oh yeah. I'm to bring the. That was a few days ago, lad. Oh, does he? Now, did I get his weapon? Oh, I've got way too many weapons. I need to start selling these. Oh no, here's a scepter. Oh yeah? Something you got happened? something to say? I didn't see a thing. You're goddamn right you didn't, you son of a bitch. Now, whoever told me about Ah uh, shit, I can't remember who it was and I'm sorry for it. Whoever told me about the NPCs reacting to you holding their weapons mentioned the Rice Lord as one of them, so let's see if he does actually react to it. Gonna have to knock him down first. You'll be sorry for that. 
You looking for... You looking... I really want my weapon back. I warned you. If you touch my stuff, you're in trouble. He's had enough. Alright, well, if you want it so bad, you son of a bitch, here you go. Won't do you no good. You'll All right, be so, sorry for that. <laughs> there you go. That's uh, that's what you can expect from a few of these NPCs if you hang on to their weapons. Anyway, that's altogether a bit amusing, but no big deal. Thanks for your use your no. All right, so there's nothing we can really uh, no f nothing we can do further from now on. Basically, the peasants are going to continue to work. The uh, rogues here are going to continue to oversee them. But the implication is that we've made things a bit better for the peasants overall. And the uh, rogues here should treat them with a little bit more respect. Hey, Gorn, what are you doing here? Ah, it's you. My friend Lester from the swamp camp told me all you did there. For somebody who hasn't been here for long, you've come quite a way. I came quite close to becoming worm food a few times, too. I have an important message for the magicians of water. Then you should talk to Satyrus. He's the highest of the water mages and spends all day studying some writings or other. But no matter how important your message is, the guards at the upper level won't let you through to him. Can't you put in a good word for me? I can't, but Kronos, the Keeper of the Ore, might be able to give you permission. Where can I find this Keeper of the Ore? If you proceed from here, you'll come across the big dwelling cave behind the dam. Kronos is usually at the grid over the big ore mound, but he's a bit arrogant. You'll have to convince him that your message is important. I think we can manage See you that. Later. So Gorn's here to give you a bit of guidance once you come through here again. He doesn't represent any big deals uh, just yet. Um, another thing I just want to kind of mention, um, my friend Dark Angel... Uh, expressed a bit of concern at the last episode when I titled it Baal Lukor, and that led him to think that the entire episode would have been uh, the entire 45 minute episode would have been me uh, following Baal Lukor through the Orc Cemetery and uh, he was a bit relieved to see that that wasn't the like the whole 45 minutes wasn't just that so uh, I just kind of wanted to I suppose clarify how I tend to title my videos basically Whatever I think is the most important feature of the video is what I use to title it. And that's mainly to kind of direct attention to it if anyone's looking for a specific quest. And I figure since I named the first, uh, since I named the episode before it, the Orc Cemetery, people would be looking for that. And if anyone was looking for more specifics on the quest, they might be searching the name Baalukor. And so that's how I figured people would be looking for that episode. There were a number of things I could have titled it as, but it was kind of difficult because I did accomplish a couple important things in that single episode. So I wasn't really sure how to title it, but the gist of it is whatever I think was a big deal in each particular video is what I'll highlight as a title of it. So uh, you'll probably be able to tell by the fact, uh, by, by the... Uh, title of this video uh, how I tend to choose my naming system. Anyway, we need well, to talk I to Kronos here. I have an important message for Satyrus. What could be so important that our spiritual leaders should interrupt his important studies for it? Kor Kalam has left the Brotherhood with some fanatical Templars. He wants to find the sleeper on his own and wake him up at all costs. I've never trusted him. Second guru or not, he's vain, insidious, and he's capable of anything. The Brotherhood is better off without him. I'll tell Satyrus about it as soon as I get the chance. Leave now. Oh, no, you don't. For the on It goes deeper than that. Iberian, the leader of the sect camp, is dead. What? How could that happen? The Brotherhood performed a ritual invoking their god. It seems the mental strain was too much for Iberian. That's very sad. Iberian was a reliable ally, 
but it's no reason to justify interrupting Satyrus's studies. Oh, what, what about the this then? The gurus have recognized that they're praying to an evil arch demon. All of a sudden, they now think their sleeper is a demon? Sounds like another mad idea of the Brotherhood, but... Should they be right, all of us in the colony here might be in grave danger. You must report to Satyrus at once. He must decide what is to be done. Where can I find Satyrus? Go to the upper level. Tell the guards there that you have my permission to pass. The password is Tetriandoch. Satyrus is by the pentagram. He spends almost all day there, studying how to blow up the big ore mound. And so, to Satyrus we go. Alright, now before we take care of that, I did want to address one more comment I got from my friend... Uh, I don't know if he prefers to be called Ivan Dado or Ivan Dado, something like that. So apologies for not knowing how to pronounce your name. Uh, those are the uh, closest, the closest approximations I can come up with. But basically, he asked about why the uh, why the female NPCs in this game didn't really have any dialogue. You saw in uh, the episode where I met with Gomez, they basically say you're not allowed to talk to us. And that's as far as it goes. Uh, Piranha Bytes has admitted that, among other things, as just something that never was fleshed out during development simply because they ran out of time. And so the uh, female NPCs, their roles were substantially reduced in the game just because Piranha Bytes couldn't... It, it was just one of many things that they couldn't finish and so just cut it cut out because they didn't think it was important enough and he also clarified that apparently uh when you are like a lot of people were talking about how they dodge in uh, combat in this game apparently holding right click when you backstep will actually uh protect you from damage i just want to see if that's actually true Looking for trouble? Just come here. Put that thing away, or you're done for. Oh god, they're using their bows. That fucks everything up. I wanted to test it, but I need someone who's only using melee. Do you want me to polish your gob? All right, well, I believe it works. Another fight. When I was young, well, maybe I don't. I don't tough. know. I'm not convinced it works. It seems like the back step simply worked by virtue of it being a back step. And uh, holding right click while you strafe doesn't seem to make a difference. So I'm not, I'm not entirely sure about it. If you guys are convinced that it works, then I'll take your word for it. But it just doesn't make a difference for me simply because... The problem with backstepping is that it puts you out of range of their attack, but it also puts you out of range of striking them back, so it really doesn't make a difference. Uh, blocking is simply the only way I can see to uh, succeed in melee here. Anyway, we have to get to Ceteris, and uh, we have to get past these motherfuckers first. Stop! Nobody may pass without the password. All hail Garcia. No, wait. Wrong game. Tetriandach. The password is Tetriandach. That's right. You may pass. Alright, and onwards we go. And we got quite a few water mages here. I say we speak to them. Because obviously there's no sense of urgency the here. Magic. I, uh, Murderian has nothing to say to us. Hey, you! Yes. Good. Don't do that again. You got it, brother. For the honor of magic. For the whatever. Who are you? I am Nefarious, magician of the Circle of Water. 
I'd like to become a magician of the Circle of Water. <laughs> Not so fast, my boy. Before we let a young man join us, he needs to have done something great. And he must have served us for some time. If you are really serious, you should join our mercenaries. There you can serve us. And maybe one day, you'll be granted a chance to do something great. That's a whole lot of maybes. Where can I find Satyrus? Go through the big round gate. You'll find him there. You mean the cave? I guess it is sort of a gate. Why would they go through the trouble of carving that out, though? It seems like a whole lot of effort for nothing. Unless somehow, you know, the architecture of this cave actually does uh, sort of... What's the word? Oh, what's the word? I hate when this happens, brain fart. And, uh, I don't know. Just sort of like encourages magical focus or something. I'm talking about out of my ass at this point, so whatever. Let's talk to this guy. For the honor of magic. For that. Greetings, magician. I am Riordian, the alchemist. I gather you want a potion? Perhaps, perhaps. Show me your good. He's got quite a few potions, nothing permanent. He's got the ball lightning spell. I feel like I tried this. I'm just not sure it's actually that useful. But, if we've got enough to trade for it, I might as well give it a try. How much does it cost? 900. So we'll give that spell a try a bit later on. There's one more mage here. Where is he? Just want to see if he has anything to say. Mixier. For the honor of magic. Nope. This is a problem. Like a lot of the mages in this game don't are not nearly as important as the mages in Gothic 2. They don't have as much to say. They don't really play any distinct role. They're just kind of there to fill out, I think, the uh, kind of requirement that there were uh, 13 mages, or, well, it's so as far as we know, there are 12 mages who created the barrier. And it seems like a, at least a couple of the mages, the water mages and the fire mages, were just kind of like fodder characters who don't actually have any real meaning, but were placed there just to you fill out that sort of requirement as part of the story. Now, it's interesting... We're going to learn a bit more about it, but there was, in fact, a 13th magician who created the... Um, who created the barrier. But it's interesting because Mike Hoga, in an interview, revealed kind of a discrepancy. They came up with the idea that there were 13 magicians, but... Uh... They later, I think, decided that there were only going to be 12. So let's take a look here. I kind of want to clarify this. One, two, three, four. So there's uh, Mardarian, Mixir, Nefarious, Yordian, Satyrus. Plus, at the old camp, Risto, Drago, Milton and the last one so in total there are only 12 magicians in this game and uh milton was a newcomer so in truth we only meet 11 magicians who were actually a part of the creation of the barrier so that whole discrepancy mike hoga actually clarified was just a sort of a misprint um they it was when they were writing the story and uh, working it into the game, I'm trying to remember. I'll link the actual um, interview in the description, but basically uh, they had corrected it. They had corrected it in the script, but after correcting it, the person who was reviewing the script, I think, thought that it was a mistake 
and so turn and so switch it back to what it was what it was originally which was that there were 13 magicians and so altogether it was just a mistake and that mistake made it all the way through the translations and everything and uh so it really wasn't wasn't meant to be that way and so there was essentially at least one magician who was unaccounted for and it's it's all pretty amusing but uh basically that's just one of many discrepancies in these games that really tells me that you're not meant to read too deeply into a lot of the things they say simply because a lot of it was by accident more or less anyway we gotta get back to satirus and uh i'm just gonna do a quick cut so we get get back there pretty quickly All right, so here is Ceteris himself, the uh, High Mage of Water here. So let's have a word with him. For the honor of magic. For that stuff. I have important news from the Brotherhood's camp. If Kronos gave you permission to visit me, it must be important news indeed. Iberian is dead. He died during the ritual invocation of the Sleeper. Iberian dead? That's bad news. Very bad news indeed. Who's leading the Brotherhood now? That power-hungry and deceitful core Kalam? No, Kalam has turned his back on the Brotherhood. He's taken some Templars with him. Nobody knows where they've gone. Why is that? He was in second place after Yiburion. Certain events have convinced the Gurus that their way is the wrong one. Their god seems to be an evil archdemon. One of the Gurus nearly killed me under the influence of the Sleeper, although I had saved his life just briefly beforehand. Korkalam was the only guru who didn't want to admit the true nature of the hellish creature. That's why he's left the camp in the swamp. I see. Well, at least we're lucky in this regard. Korangar is a good man. He's tough, but honest. If anybody could prevent the Brotherhood from falling apart after this spiritual catastrophe, he can. I have this almanac. Iberian used it to charge the focus. Very good. We need the knowledge contained in this book to charge the five original focus stones. I'll take the almanac. I have this focus. You're holding the key that can unlock all our bonds. It's one of the five focus stones which were used to create the magic barrier. And with the help of the very same focusing power of these stones, we'll tear down the Great Wall of Energy. But won't that use up an awful lot of power? True. But in all these years, we've untiringly collected ore instead of trading it for luxuries with our jailers. As you must know, each ore nugget contains a certain amount of magic power. With the aid of the energy thus amassed in the ore mound, we'll be able to destroy the magic barrier. Sounds dangerous. The explosion will be merely of a magical nature. It will only destroy everything that's been modified by the magic inside the barrier. There is no danger to us human beings. So you say. Here, take the focus. I hope it really will be of some use to your plans with the ore mound. What are you going to do with the focus and the almanac now? Nothing. We need the four remaining focus stones first. Unfortunately, we don't have any of these four magic stones. I'm willing to find the four remaining focus stones for you. After all, I'm quite keen on getting out of here sometime myself. I must warn you. Searching for them will prove as difficult as it will be dangerous. Since conflict with the old camp is getting worse every day, I cannot give you any mercenary either. You'll be totally on your own. Well, that's nothing unusual for me. I'll find a way to organize these things. Your confidence does you credit, but you'll need some items to assist you. Take this map here. It's old, but on it you'll see the original locations of the focus stones when the barrier was created. Also, this spell scroll will enable you to travel back to our camp faster. Finally, you need to speak to Riordian. He brews the potions for the camp. You'll find him in his hut, here, on the upper level. May you return in one piece? One piece indeed. Alright, so, we have a new task here. Uh, as Iberian placed all his uh, remaining hopes on the planet of the water mages it seems they are still pretty convinced that they can blow up the ore mound but they need the five focus stones which were used to uh create the barrier itself which we actually kind of got a glimpse of in the intro 
And, uh, so we have to go and seek those. For some reason, they were left behind in the locations where the, uh, each, where the rituals were taking place. Uh, before we go to those locations, we have to speak with Riordan to get some potions here. Apparently, he's using the nail club we sold him, which is kind of funny. Satyrus sent me. Ah, come here. I've already been informed. Here, take these potions. They're potions of all kinds. Now go and bring us the focus stones. These artifacts are our only hope. Cool. And the potions he gives us... Uh, we get one potion of strength, which is all well and good, and one of dexterity. Which ain't too bad. So, that's actually enough dexterity to use the uh, bone bow, but we're probably not really going to worry about that. Alright, so, uh, next episode, ladies and gentlemen, will take us on a uh, journey for the four remaining focus stones, and that will altogether be a pretty interesting uh, expedition of sorts. We'll start with the nearest one and kind of wrap our way around the colony from there. The, uh, the, um, the thingamajig, the teleportation scroll that Satyrus gave us, it's a one-time use, as all scrolls are, but if you come back with one of the focus stones each time you use that scroll, he will give you another one to replace it. And, uh... There's kind of like a, there's a story reason why he doesn't give you the rune to teleport you back here, why he only gives you scrolls. But basically, just make sure that you have one of the focus stones every time you come back here. Uh, just to make sure that you can get another scroll, uh, most scroll. Uh, just make sure you get another scroll in return for it. Anyway, uh, hope you all enjoyed watching. This is another pretty boring, uh, dialogue filled episode. And, uh, of course, a lot of chat on my part, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Next episode will be a bit more interesting, and uh, we'll see you all then.